Cool. Uh, welcome to Pixelated Geek Presents Tripod, which is a weekly, a live weekly video podcast featuring JJ Crass, myself, James Honeycutt, and Taylor Tate. Um, we're broadcasting live currently on Hangouts Live as well as Twitch TV. Uh, you can catch the recording of this on uh, youtube.com slash pixelated geek, twitch tv slash pixelated geek, as well as on the pixelated geek iTunes page, which would be live by the time this recording um, gets up there. So if you have any responses, uh, if you want to make any comments or just reach out to us, go ahead and do that there. Um, so, uh, hey everybody, welcome again um, to this. This is uh, Monday the 30th, uh, 2015. Um, and we kind of wanted to go over uh, two or three things that happened recently this week. Um, one of them was, uh, I, I kind of don't want to do the Halo thing first, because that's that's kind of a big deal. So, you guys cool if we start talking about the Top Gear thing, since it's all topical and whatnot? Sure, I'm good for it. Alright, um, so just to give a frame of reference, uh, Top Gear is a motorsports show on BBC. It's actually like the best rated reality TV show of all time. Uh, it's one of BBC's highest rated TV shows. Um, and it features three hosts, which all have very strong personalities. Um, essentially testing cars. It's not like, a, it's not like a, a literal car show in a sense that it just like reviews cars and talks about them. Um, it it's kind of like it's fun it's wacky it's zany it's it's more about like personality and like the love of they do crazy things like figure out who can build the most um sort of like viable boat for you know land to sea journeys and like whether or not a truck can drive across a volcano etc so one of the hosts jeremy clarkson was terminated this week he was terminated uh for a couple of reasons we'll get into but Ostensibly, it was because he assaulted a producer, which, I mean, obviously, if you know anything about TV, you don't, you don't want to do that. Don't leave the producers alone, because they're the guys that sign the paychecks. Um, but so that, uh, it, he sort of had a history as an unpopular figure. Um, and I kind of, I want to get into, like, a specific detail of that later. But um, just immediately, what was your reaction, Taylor, to uh, Clarkson being being sacked um i was very unhappy with it um you know i i i still don't know all the details of it i don't know if, if anyone ever will sure um but i was unhappy with their decision and from what little i've heard they were in a situation where the hosts were being deprived of food as like a, yes. as a way to make them irritable Absolutely. which get, can get better moments out of them um which is true but at the same time like these are like kind of cranky old guys who are, you know, used to having their way, and they, they you know, they, I don't know, I, I like them too much. I'm blinded by my enjoyment of the show yes. to objectively speak on it. Um, and I have a point about, about like, how preference plays into viewing, uh, you know, uh, events like this that I'll bring up, you know, once we get past initial sure, preference. Sure, okay, so JJ, what, what was your initial thought on that? I mean, I'll come on and say I'm not the biggest Top Gear fan. I mean, I don't. It's not that I hate it. I just never really watched it okay. uh, that much. Um, when I first heard the news, I wasn't surprised. Um, okay. And it, it's not that I was happy that he was terminated, but it's one of those. In my opinion, you hit somebody, you hit your boss. You shouldn't be surprised if you don't have a job. Sure. Why? Why weren't you surprised? Just out of curiosity. Uh, it, <sighs> Because I've always heard that you know the people not getting along on set. There have been other issues with him in the past. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I think this is kind of like the final straw. Sure. And it to me, it's kind of one of those. You may be deemed the most popular person, but if you hit somebody, don't be surprised if you don't get a paycheck anymore. Okay. Like it yeah. doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter who you are. You know what I mean? Right. Like it could be Bill Gates punching somebody in the face. It's like, well, you still assaulted a person. Sure. Um, and you know. yeah, I'll go ahead and speak to that. I mean, obviously Clarkson is incendiary. He always has been. Uh, that's part of the draw of Clarkson is that he's he's got a lot of personality. Um, and this isn't the first time they've been in an altercation. And um, I think one of the things about the situation that's unsurprising is that it was Clarkson it happened to. Um, one of the things that did surprise me about it was his reaction to it afterwards. So uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but there were like a mass 
of protests, which sort of culminated in a death threat that was sent to the head of the BBC um, for terminating him. And it was really interesting to see Clarkson react to that because he largely said, leave the producer alone. It's not his fault. Like he, he publicly made a statement. This was my fault and I did it. It's not his fault. Please don't blame him. But what I kind of wanted to talk about as a whole on this topic is we've got a really popular TV show. And you've got a, a figure on it that's incredibly important to the function of the TV show. They've, um, James May and Richard Hammond have gone on the record saying they don't really feel like it would work really well without Jeremy. Um, their personalities are, are the thing that make this show work. So this person gets thrown off the show, and then the public is so upset by that that we have a tank show up with the petition to reinstate it. A tank show up at the BBC offices. And then death threats are levied against the BBC head. Um, is this... Is this, like, outrageous? To, like, I love that show. I love Jeremy Clarkson. He's the best part of the show. He's hilarious. What kind of world do we live in where that's something that happens? Taylor, the point you wanted to make before and then respond to that. Um, so the point I want to make was uh, when you're looking at figures in the media, whether they be TV hosts or actors, and they do actions like this, they, you know, abuse... And, you know, sometimes it's at least verbally, but never, like, overly serious, because obviously you cross the line, there's a, you know, more, there's a more, there's more a line that breaks through than being celebrities. Sure. But for Clarkson, kind of like the event with Christian Bale chewed out the, I believe it was the sound, one of the sound yes. engineers when filming. Yeah. Like that event, um, I think you can certainly make the decision, and a decision that should be respected, to... Because you like the actor or the character they do so much that you can just accept this, that you can accept the behavior and be like, you know, like what I was saying, like they were old guys, they were, they may or may not have been being, being deprived of food to make mm -hmm. to like draw out you know reactions from them better, um, and that could and could not make it more understandable. But at the same time, uh, you know, it, because I like them so much, I'm willing to accept this behavior. I'm willing to be like, you know, get them back on the air. Bring Clarkson back on. I don't care about the producer because I like Clarkson so much. Uh, just like if, for whatever reason, uh, Christian Bale had been pulled out of uh, Dark Knight Rises and replaced by someone else because you chewed up the sound guy. I would not have watched the movie, and I would have verbally, to anyone who listened, probably paying the movie as much as possible. Sure. Like, I, like how, how I'm not exactly promoting... Um, the new Batman, but that's not really that's well, not really yeah, fault. Not but, to not to shoot your your point in the foot, but that was totally Terminator Genesis, I think. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was Terminator. Right, and the only point that that makes is that that movie mattered so little that he could have done whatever the fuck he wanted. And <laughs> it, was, it wasn't Genesis. It was it was the oh hold on, JJ would know this. Genesis is the new one. Oh oh god, uh, Salvation. There you go. All right, which was yeah. obviously not that for that friend. Useless knowledge. There you go. Yeah, but so yeah, so it, yeah. Okay, that's that's a good point. Um, I do think there are times when you just allow certain things from certain personalities, and I I don't think it's a surprise that Jeremy Clarkson on Top Gear gets hungry and punches someone. I don't. That's a <laughs> right. fat man. Right. That's a big fat man. Give that man. And they put them. The producers have put those guys in some in some really like tough situations, like, like physically tough and still in their age. Like literally through war zones. Yeah. Like just okay. Um, but so yeah. that said, what what do you think about the idea of celebrity having so much effect on our psyche? Like why death threats? Where does that come from? Well, it's, it's supposed to be, supposedly, it's, it's one of like, the most popular shows in the world, like globally. It is. So you're, you're going to see a backlash. You know, I'm sure the BBC was aware of what they were going to face. They, they had expectations. I'm sure death threats was like, you know, pretty low on the, on the list. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, there's going to be death threats. And well, oh, yeah, of course it's going to happen. Yeah, um, okay. I think the tank might have been a little bit of a surprise. Um, <laughs> and I certainly... Surprise. I certainly don't think it's over. I thought you were going to say but, the tank is excessive, but death threats aren't. 
But what? no, excesses, yes. Unexpected, no. Yeah. There's no way they could have made the decision to let Clarkson go and cancel the rest of that season in top gear without expecting at least, I don't know, I'm going to ballpark it at 100 death threats. I mean, it's not going to just run. Number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I'm lowballing it. So, I mean, it does not surprise me this kind of reaction, the size of a reaction uh, based upon a celebrity like that, because Clarkson was a lot of what made the show very, very fun. All three of them, all three of them did. I think even if you had removed, you know, Hammond or May, there still would have been a severe backlash. Yeah. It's, it's not just Clarkson individual. It's you've broken down the entire, well, not the entire, most of what makes Top Gear work. Because if you think it's just about the cars, look at Top Gear America. Look at how horrible that show is. Yeah. Because they tried to recreate what they had in the English version, and it, it's just wait, no. Wait, hold on, hold on. Did you say is? Is that on the air? That's not. That wasn't canceled. Tell me that was canceled. That was canceled, right? <laughs> it does. Okay. Anyway, no, I, to I respond to your, your your statement, like that show is about three people who are car nerds who love cars, and it's about coming up with ridiculous things to do with cars. And then there's like a five minute segment where they pretend to review a car and then drive it around the track. And that's it. That's what that that's what that show is. And it's really interesting to me that so like whatever he did was so drastic that they thought that they could remove one third of what made the highest rated show on BBC over the last twenty years. And make that work. Um but still, my mind boggles at death threats. JJ, what's your what's your take on this on this whole thing? I mean, I, I can understand the whole like he's one of your favorite celebrities. Let's give him a pass. Um, that 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 idea. But it, for me, it's kind of harder to give people passes, even if I like them now. Sure. Um, you know, I I wouldn't say immediate fire. It could be just put him on suspension, something like that. But that would still cause an outcry. I, the idea of you know them being surprised by either death threats or a tank. I mean, a tank is obviously ex- obviously excessive, sure. and any death threats of any form for anything I think are idiotic. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, I mean, obviously it does hurt, hurt the show. I'm surprised they just don't just axe the show. Oh no! They, well, I think it's probably what's gonna happen. Yeah, they like, they pretty much have like gone on. They've said no more for this season, and that there's a likelihood that the show will have a lapse until they can find a solution to the hosting thing. I think what will probably happen is they will they will do what they did last time, which is wait a couple of years and start it up with three new people. But continue with your your point. Well, and I actually, I mean, I give him credit for owning up to it, being like, don't get mad at the producers. I, yeah. you know, I did this. Um, you know, it's one of those heat of the moment, you do it, and he realizes it, and at least he was like, you know what? This is not their fault. I did this, which led to this. Which I respect. It's not, I'm not saying he was childish. He deserved everything. You know, he's a bad person. I, I enjoy them. Um, from what I've watched, I enjoy their commentary in Forza 5, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, they you know, love cars, and that's what makes this show special, is that they you yeah. you, you hear it in their talk. Like, those moments in Forza 5 when you hear one of those three come over and do a voice of a bit, like, about a category of car, it's just like, it gives me chills, because it's so cool. Yeah, and, and it's, yeah, I mean, it does suck to see a show you, like, come to an end, or have a, mm-hmm. you know, have a snack. Um, but it's kind of one of those, it's kind of to be expected. And I'm not really surprised by what's happened. Okay. From the from BBC's point of view, from fans, it's kind of like it's a little ridiculous. Okay. All right. Well, see, I guess really kind of what I wanted to like peg on with that was just the way that we, as a culture, interact with our our media, like the way that we, we like approach things and like we. I think as millennials tend to get a lot more caught up in fictional media, media, social media than we do in reality sometimes. Like we, we sort of like walk away from the things that matter because I know that like a lot of things happened in the last two weeks all across the world. And I know that the thing that I think I got most upset about may or may not have been Jeremy Clarkson being removed from Top Gear. 
And that's like, that, like I, that's a horrible sentence, and that's like a weird reality to like to deal with. But like, that was one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it is the way that media can like kind of climb into your brain, and and become something that is like genuinely important to you, even though it it doesn't matter because we we don't. Like, I'm going to have food. I have a place to live. It doesn't really matter that he's gone, but it, yeah. So, I mean, do you guys have any, like, closing thoughts on, like, the way that, like, media, like, climbs into your brain and affects you? I don't think the fact that that it has such an effect on us is anything that we, that we were surprised at. I mean, no. I mean, you can look at, you know, as simple as, the continued integration of things like mobile devices as to, you know, a way to be, give you a constant buffet of, you know, media stimulation. Right. Um, it, it, I think it's just a, a fact of the times. And, you know, those people who, are, who lead life, who try and resist it, or who just doesn't affect them as much, like, I, I cannot imagine what that's like. I imagine it's pretty good, but at the same time, like, I'm not upset about the fact that media is in such a large, you know, effect of control on our lives. It's, you know, which is probably not a good thing, but <laughs> yeah, that's why it's it's very it's very brave new world. JJ, closing thoughts. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't say I I haven't gotten mad when a show got canceled or something like that has happened. Right. Um, so I'm not saying you know just Top Gear fans or anything like that. It's, I mean, you love a show, you can it's fine to get upset when something bad happens. So it's happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people. And fire fly. <laughs> oh, I do. I'm no longer pissed off. I am no longer pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> um. It's more like, that's cute. Uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, we've all had something we cared about, a show-wise, or a media, you know, get canceled, franchise, something we love, a game, or a studio. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think we kind of do get, tend to get more pissed off than we should. Sometimes, but, you know what, we love these things, and that's fine to do sometimes. Okay. And, like, they, they want to make us love them more, so it's right. like, don't fault me. Yeah. So, Taylor, um, segue, things we care about a lot. Have you watched the other Halo 5 trailer? No. Okay. God. JJ, have you watched the other Halo 5 trailer? I have. Have you? Okay. So you've seen the one with Locke and the one with John, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Taylor, it's in the chat if, if that's something that you want to do. And I think you should do that very shortly while JJ and I talk about this really quick. Um... So I'm going to do it right now. You should do that. Uh, so to give a, a quick synopsis, um, earlier this week we had two Halo 5 trailers. Um, and that was actually news to a lot of us because there was the one that premiered during some basketball game that some people watch. I don't, who are those people, <laughs> right? What? Um, but so the, the one that was widely promoted featured Locke. And it was Locke with a, a rather poorly written monologue uh, attacking John as the um, as this deific hero in concept for the culture versus the reality of him. And he was he was laying at the bottom of the uh, of the the monument that humanity had erected for John post the Covenant War. Um, and the one that we had not seen previously. Right. So the other trailer is John attacking Locke. No. no. Oh, boo. Yeah. Are you? Oh, you're not done yet. Okay. So, um, so okay. In that case, we'll look at JJ. Just give me your thoughts on the whole about the first trailer, the one where Locke was doing the voiceover. Well, I mean, there's also that teaser trailer which had the. Shh. He hasn't seen that one either. Really? It's like Pro 15 I seconds long. Right. Okay. Ah, oh, Taylor. <laughs> um, it's a neat marketing thing. I th something I've, I mean, after watching, um, what was it, Nightfall? I yeah, guess right, Nightfall. The, yeah. The bad one. The Halo. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um. God, yeah, so that monologue thing wasn't really a surprise. So bad. But just so bad. For me, I, and having seen what Locke's armor looks like to me, looks a little more covenant. Um, okay. or not or not of 
the uh, UNSC. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't look like it's sure. a proper Spartan build. Okay. Um, or it could be an Oni build, and they're using Covenant technology. But it's always seemed like that these two aren't going to do a buddy cop game together. Okay. Um, and this is kind of showing a little bit more of that side. Okay. So, I mean, I think, like, essentially what you have is you have Locke who's chastising Chief. Like, he's betrayed humanity. And, Taylor, let us know when you finish the other trailer so we can talk about that. But so uh, I finished the John version. John. I've seen the Locke one. Okay, so you've seen the John version. Okay, so in the John, in John's version, Locke is the one who's lying under the statue with wounds in his armor. Yeah. And um, John seems to be attacking him because of his single-minded dedication to a specific task. And I think it's very clear that they're establishing the two of them as opposing protagonist in some way, shape, or form. I think, I think it's very clear that, especially the way that the uh, Spartan Ops went in um, Halo 4, that Halsey has decided to roll over Covenant ways. Cortana is gone, uh, though obviously not dead, because there isn't a Halo without Cortana, and if there is, we're out. Like, we're done. Like, well, she, I, she's in the Windows phone, so clearly she's not gone. Well, more than that, though, like, there there have been viral indications that Cortana is not gone gone. Cortana, well, I, don't, I don't believe she broke. She, she broke herself. She broke herself into all these different versions of herself. It's statistically unlikely, I think, that not a single one of them survived. Right. See, I. I mean, so I. I want to get to interpretations in a second here, in a very specific order. But so, you have this John versus Locke thing that's happening. You have these two ads, that are from different perspectives. Are we seeing? like an RPG direction for Halo, is there going to be a, an opposed campaign, or is there going to be a point at which, during Halo 5, we have to choose a side? Uh, I, I have thoughts so. on this, but let's, let's, start with, let's start with JJ on this. JJ, what do, you, what do you think about that as a concept? You mean like campaign-wise and mechanics? Like yeah. cat and mouse type of thing? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, um, it'd be a little different. I mean, you kind of had that with originally with uh, the Arbiter, and yep. in Halo Two, a little bit of that. Right. That was always a neat perspective. I know a lot of fans didn't like it in the beginning because it was like, "Oh, I'm not playing Master Chief. What the hell is this? Um, everything's purple." But you know, I think it could work. Um, Locke never seemed like even in the show and how um, I forget the name of the actors talked about the character. Um, like they're on the same page. Okay. You know, um, and it is you know Oni versus a Spartan, so two different mindsets. Okay, uh, Taylor, and I think it would be interesting okay. doing this. Okay, Taylor, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't think we'll see any RPG elements in Halo. Um, I just even even them making changes to the game. I don't think the changes will be that severe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that. The Locke ad sounds like something Locke would say. I think the John ad sounds like nothing John would ever say. Um, so that kind of bugs me. Yeah. Um, um, I, I would actually like John also to, says like five things. Well, yeah, I would actually like to interject. Well, yeah, well, it's a Cortana he talks a lot, but yeah. At that point. I think that that was bullshit. I think it was, I think it was nonsense. Um, it didn't, yeah. first of all, um, and I, I know that that this is kind of specific, but the guy that does the voiceover for Master Chief is the kind of person who was hired doing video game voiceovers like 20 years ago. And the guy that was hired to do Locke was hired because he he's now financially viable. And so, in terms of intensity, Master Chief just sounded like a fucking idiot. Like, he didn't... It wasn't there, it wasn't intense, the dialogue wasn't good... But I do think it's a marketing tool. I think it's designed to indicate something. Now, if, if you don't think they're adding RPG elements to, to Halo, why do you think we get the exact same situation in a conflict 
in opposition to each other. What, why do you think they, they frame that that way? Well, I don't even think this will be a, a scene that even happens in the game. I think that it purely is just part of this campaign sure. to maybe bring people who aren't who haven't been paying attention to the recent Halo things to bring them up to speed. The fact that um, kind of what JJ said, you know, these that you know Locke and John are not going to be doing this buddy cop thing if they're on the same page. That they have different goals. Um, to just kind of like give a fundamental understanding of that, so that someone who walks in lore wise blind into Halo Five will still be able to, you know, enjoy and I guess quickly pick up on, you know, what they're what they're talking about and showing in the game. Okay. Uh, JJ, what do you what do you think with regards to that? Um, I mean yeah, like, I don't think they'll do too much to change the mechanics. I mean I remember rumors like Halo Five will be an open world FPS <laughs> and I was like, God please no. <laughs> you know, you need that structure for these games. Um or at least with the Chief story. Um, I will agree, the tone doesn't sound right for Master Chief. Uh, he's, I don't think we've ever really heard him angry before. You know, he's kind of... I don't think he would. Because he's not, he's, you know, I mean, he's what, Spartan Gen 2? 1. One. Right. One, 1, yeah. When it was like, let's just reprogram these small children and, you know, ruin them. So, they've kind of correct, you know, chosen how they function, and it's one of those... I don't think Chief would get angry like that. I, I don't even think we've seen in situations where he verbally angry. Gets yeah, he, angry. I think he just he, does something about it. Right. Like what he's supposed to do. You know, he's supposed to complete a mission, move on to the next one, and go and go and go and go until he can no longer do it. So having him have emotions is a little weird. And it's saying I don't want him to have emotions, but it's kind of breaking what we know of chief it would be much better if the emotions he had seemed viable taylor you actually raised a really interesting point in the trailer there's a ship and that ship does appear to be um i don't know it's yeah it does and in orbit i don't know that i recognize it initially but it is not it is not organic looking enough to be covenant Correct. And, and it does not look like anything we've seen from humanity. It doesn't even look like... Because, like, the Infinity is still up and around yeah. from uh, 4 slash Spartan mm. Ops. Right. Um, and that was about... And that looks... It doesn't look anyway. Like Infinity doesn't look, look like anything right. uh, that uh, humanity has been, like, pushing on in terms of ship design because you saw a lot of those in Halo 4, the changes they've made from the previous iterations of the game. Um, but nothing like that. My guess would be... I mean, it looks almost, like, didact-esque in terms of the use of orange a lot. Um, I think because I mean, really, that that will be um, that that will be a thing. I mean, I I, think I forgot that's that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, it's not forerunner. I mean, that that I think is for sure. At least it's it's obviously not going to be piloted by forerunners. It could be like a forerunner driven by something else, kind of what we saw in Halo Two or right. Three. Well, and um, it's, it's not but, like they're necessarily created a situation in which. All of the, um, oh, help me out with this, the knights, the things that we ran into. That, those weren't technically Forerunner. They were the no. acquired human AI beings. constructs. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm forgetting. No, they were, the they were just AI before. constructs. Yeah, but there was like a term. But so, like, they haven't necessarily all been dealt with, and most of their technology is based on Forerunner stuff. So we might we might be running into that. Um, yeah, I think... Um, I think I'm I'm excited to see what direction they go though. I'm I'm going to flat out this is going to go one direction or the other. We're either going to get a campaign where you have like control over one character or the other and you make a choice or it's going to be a situation just like the diorama from Halo 3 where they just fucking <laughs> completely where the it was so good. Right? It's it was so an good. amazing trailer, and you're watching it, and you're like, it was, oh, I was fine with him ignoring it. John I was fine with it. And, do this thing where he's going to sacrifice himself for everyone because he's dying, and then, and then nothing. Then fuck all in Halo 3 about it. The old man picking up a brute spiker, being like, uh, I right. These. The museum part and the diorama was so good 
I didn't need for them to be explained or even mentioned in the game. They were so good as just like the standalone. Yeah, just, but see, explaining I love this universe is one thing, but the plot of the game completely and totally goes against it. Like, at no point is there ever a situation where John is being, like, held up in the air, like, limp, dying, and then there's a grenade in his hand, and then he's sacrificed. Like, that that was awesome, and that's what I wanted, and the end of Halo 3 was kind of like, and they're, no, they're gone. They're gone. They, they're, they're out. We're not, we're not sure where they went, though, so... We're going to do a thing. Stay tuned. Nail a bunch of pictures to a ship and then sell you a game in four years. Ha <laughs> ha. Fuckers. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, we're at time. And I, uh, I really appreciate you guys showing up. That wraps us up for, um, gosh, what the hell is today again? It's the, yeah, it's the 30th, 30th. of March. Yeah. Monday the 30th of March. Um, thanks very much for making us a uh, part of your day. Um, if you would help us out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, um, jump on that Google Plus page, Facebook. Definitely subscribe to Twitch. Um, if you can, subscribe to the iTunes podcast. We'll be back with you next week. Uh, for James Honeycutt, uh, or rather for Jonathan Crass and Taylor Tate, I am James Honeycutt. You guys have a wonderful night. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. Well.